Hello everyone. So in this video, I'll show you how to install LAMP stack on Amazon Linux 2 instance. So uh, before we get into the installation part, let's first talk about what is LAMP. LAMP stands for Linux, Apache, uh, MySQL, and PHP. Okay. So it's a stack of the backend programming language like PHP, our web server, Apache, and the database, MySQL. All right, running on a Linux operating system. So many applications uh, work on LAMP stack. So to give you an example of a LAMP stack based application, we have something known as WordPress, which is a content management system, right? Many website and it is, or it is being said that 70% of the internet or 70% of the websites on the internet are powered by WordPress. Okay, so you can use WordPress to build a lot of exciting websites such as a travel blogging platform, or a learning platform. Okay. And just to give you one more example, we have something known as Magento, which is an, again, a content management system, but uh, more specifically for uh, e-commerce based website. So you have e-com website, if you want to build your own e-com website. So Magento is the uh, content management system or like say software, right, which can be used to build a, a e-com website. Okay, a fully functional e-com website. And again, to uh, host uh, Magento on a Linux machine, you would require LAMP to be configured. Okay, so you can build a website like this. So with this being said, let's log into our EC2 instance. And uh, first let's log into our AWS console and then let's create an EC2 instance. And then on top of that EC2 instance, we will install the LAMP. Yeah. We'll go to EC2 instance and we'll say launch instance. Let's call it as LAMP server. Select Amazon Linux 2 as our operating system. Then a key pair and select T2 micro as the size. And I already have a default security group where the necessary ports are allowed, so I'm not creating a new one. And I launch this instance. Now for the commands part, I would be following the AWS official documentation over here, which talks about how to install LAMP. So uh, all the commands required to install the LAMP stack is over here. I'll go line by line, try to explain you this command and we'll do the installation. Let's log into the EC2 instance. And we will elevate the privileges by doing sudo su. Now, it would be recommended that if you can uh, quickly do a OS upgrade or the Linux kernel upgrade by doing gem update. So what this will do is uh, gem will basically check for all the packages which are not up to date and will try to update those packages. Okay, so there are no packages which are out of date. Now next we are installing the uh, from the Amazon Linux extras repository. We are, install, we are, we are installing LAMP, MariaDB, PHP. 
7.2 and PHP 7.2. Now, why two times PHP 7.2 and MariaDB PHP 7.2? So this is like an external extra library on top of PHP, which enables PHP to talk to the MariaDB or MySQL database. Okay, so that's why we are installing both. Okay, then after that, we'll install HTTPD server, which is the Apache web server and the MariaDB database. So we have installed P, which is PHP in our LAMP. We already have L, which is Amazon Linux. Then we are installing Apache A and we are installing MariaDB for M. So that completes our LAMP stack. Now, once this is installed, you can start your web server. So, system CTL start HTTPD will start your Apache web server. And then next, we'll say system CTL enable HTTPD, which will make sure that your Apache comes online automatically after every reboot. So, you don't need to manually uh, bring up your HTTPD or Apache web server. Okay. Now, if you want, you can quickly verify if uh, Apache is running by going to this page, all right, or hitting the IP address of your LAMP stack. Now, if you're not able to connect your Apache web page, then probably check your security group. It should have a, a rule which allows port 80. So for me, it is like, uh, I've allowed all the port numbers for all protocol and all ports, but you can do a restrictive port uh, for port 80 allowed for everyone. And that would do the work for you. So once this is installed, next what we'll do is uh, we are adding easy to user to Apache group. So Apache web server we have installed. It would have created a group. Okay, inside that group we are adding the easy to user. All right, so that the easy to user gets the necessary permission. Though easy to user would have all the permission because that is a super user. But yeah, we'll, we'll do this. And then next. Okay, next what we are doing is we are uh, giving the Apache uh, service permission to this directory. Okay, so change the group ownership of where www and its content to Apache. So by default, the owner of this directory is uh, EC2 because this is the user we use to install the Amazon, uh, we, we use to install the HTTPD. Now we are making the Apache web server, the owner to this directory. Okay, so we'll do this. And then we're giving some permissions. Okay, all right, 277 permissions. Okay, on this directory. Okay, so again, it's a recursive permission on this directory. Okay, so the Apache group will have permission on that directory. So we have changed ownership. We're giving permission. Okay. Next, to check if PHP is working fine, we can create an info.php page. Okay. And we can hit this info.php page to check if PHP is installed correctly or not. PHP. Okay. PHP info.php that will show you the php version okay and what all php features have been enabled so for example uh, php can using php you can write in program which can uh, basically let you upload files to the server okay what size what file size can be uploaded using a php script is defined over here so only 2 mb file can be uploaded using a php based program okay so you there is a file known as php.ini file which controls all these things and if you want you can update that file but again that's a different discussion we'll move we'll move forward okay now if you want you can remove this uh, php info or info.php page okay now next we need to configure the database so mariadb server is already installed We'll start the service and then we'll do a secure installation. 
So now we'll, we are actually configuring the MariaDB or MySQL database. So we don't have any current root user password, so I'll leave it blank. We want to set the password and I'll set the password. Okay, if you want, you can remove the anonymous user. Okay, I'll say, yes, just remove it. Disable remote login. I'm, I let, If you disable this, then you won't be able to log into your database uh, from a different client. So whenever you want to connect to the database, you would need to first log into this machine and then only you would, need, would, you would be able to log into the database. I'm not removing, I'm not disabling the anon remote access. There's a no to this. I'm not removing test database. I'm reloading the privileges. Okay, so the database is installed. And we'll stop the database service. We'll make sure whenever you reboot the database, it comes online again. Okay. Next, if you want an optional step, you can install PHP MyAdmin. So what PHP MyAdmin does, uh, PHP MyAdmin gives you a access to your MySQL database through a PHP-based web application. So through your public IP address, right? There would be an application which will launch, and that application through that application you can connect to your uh, MySQL database, and you can do whatever you like. You can create tables, you can run a SQL query, you can do all those things. So if you want, you can install this additional uh, package, okay, which enables you to uh, run PHP My Admin, but I'm not doing it. But you can follow these steps and you can install PHP My Admin. So this is what PHP My Admin web page would look like. Okay. And once you're logged in, you can configure your database. Okay. Now, just to check if my uh, installation is working correctly or not. Okay. I'll start the database. First, let me start the database. And I'll create a simple PHP application. Okay, just give me a minute. Okay, so this is a small PHP application okay, which is connecting to the database locally. And that's why it says local over here. Database username is root in this scenario and the database password is this. Now, if this application is connected successfully to the database, then it will show you this message connected successfully. If it's not able to connect successfully, then it will show you an error. Okay, so let's create this application on our LAM server. So we'll go to where www HTML directory and here we'll say index.php. We'll copy paste this small application. Okay. And now uh, we'll try to access this application. Okay. And this application will in turn try to access database and if it's able to connect to the database it will show a successful message and here we have the successful message the application was able to connect to the database and it is showing the message connected successfully okay. all right so this is it for this video where we saw how to install lamb stack so that you can run lamb based application like wordpress and magento on amazon linux machine i hope you like this video thank you for Watching.